Hello, friends. What a season we are engaged in. It reminds me of 2 Timothy where Paul wrote, but mark this, in the last days there will be terrible times. March met us with unprecedented news that left a great degree of uncertainty with all of us. Things that hadn't been a reality for most of our lifetimes suddenly became true for us, not slowly, but aggressively. It forced many people to make decisions, not fully understanding the circumstances nor the consequences of those decisions. We listened to what we were told because the alternative was portrayed as unacceptable or even terrifying. While we've not seen the virus attack us in large degree here in Crawford County, the mitigation it has left a deep wound in the fabric of our existence. Our norms changed. Anxiety and fear, it rose within our people. Most churches closed their doors and no longer held in-person services. Government, restaurants, businesses also deemed non-essential also closed their doors. As a people, we were left without social fellowship. We were told, shelter at home and wait. And so we did. We watched and we waited. During this time, we were fed press conferences and it seemed that the rift between man it went wider and wider. We were asked to trust, but at times we were asked to trust when the argument and science didn't agree. The longer we were at home, the more we needed an answer to the question, who or what am I supposed to believe? About two weeks ago, we saw the senseless death of George Floyd played out multiple times in front of us. Once again, the world caught fire. In a season where we should bring justice to the accused and mourn the death of the victim, we were forced to focus on other things which have further divided. Our government leaders have shown themselves to be inconsistent at best, hypocritical at worst. So much has left us needing an answer to the question, who or what am I supposed to believe? Andre Crouch wrote the answer to this question in his song, Jesus is the Answer. He said, if you're having some questions in the corner of your mind and traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, reflections of the old past that seem to face you every day, there's one thing I know for sure, Jesus is the way. He only echoed what was sung by Miriam, the sister of Moses, when God sent the Egyptians the great water to swallow them. The waves enveloped the army. She said, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. She sang of a concept that would mirror something that Jesus spoke of later in his life. As he simply but proudly proclaimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 10, 25, Forsake not the assembling together, all the more as you see the day approaching. That text has helped to lead our church to the decision that we must be a place where people can encounter the Christ, the answer to the question of who and what can I believe in. Why? Because all around us we see conflict and failure. And the more we come to know Jesus, the more we will realize that though the world is crumbling down around us, Jesus never fails. As your pastor, I've led you to embrace a catechism for the reason we exist. It simply says this, the lost need to be saved and the saved need to be healed. In each case, we need fellowship with people. And we have found that need for fellowship so desperate that we've decided to reopen the church that we may better fulfill that catechism calling. I know you have questions, so I thought it would be best to break it down into short answers. Number one, is it legal? Well, as of March 29th, Governor Pritzker withdrew all restrictions regarding church worship. 
We are now gov governed, forgive me, in partnership with our church leaders and the Crawford County Health Department. Our plan was submitted to the Crawford County Health Department and was seen as well thought out and comprehensive. Well, you may say, okay, Aaron. Well, what are you doing to keep us safe? Let me inform you that on our website, robfmc.com, we have our plan for reopening. Uh, basically, it's, it's like this. We are concerned for both the physical and mental component of safety. We believe that we're addressing both. All attendees are going to have their temperatures taken before entering the church. They will also be asked questions about COVID uh, symptoms, and each will receive a dose of hand sanitizer and be offered a mask. Everyone is going to be encouraged to wear a mask for the benefit of others. Now, volunteers are, are volunteers because they have consented to wear a mask for the benefit of others. And in some cases, you'll find that they'll also be wearing gloves if they're going to have any physical interaction with people. We will enforce social distancing in several ways that, as, as I said, we have listed on our website um, in our plan to reopen. There will be no staff nursery. There will be no children's nursery. And we're going to make our Sunday services a little shorter to accommodate. Now, a couple of things. The Center for Disease Control is very concerned about the susceptibility of those of you who are our elders or who have comorbidities or other health problems. I need you to understand that you take a risk by coming. Though we believe that we have adequately prepared for your safety, there is no guarantee that you will not get sick. Now that being said, you are most welcome if you decide to come. We want you to be here and we want you to know that we respect your ability to choose for yourself. One consideration that I do ask you to make is this. If you feel sick, please stay home. We will continue to broadcast virtually through Facebook Live and we'll also upload a full version of the service on Sunday afternoon for you to watch in HD quality. If you've received DVDs in the past, you will also continue to get them as well, though they will probably come on Sunday evening because of the time needed to record the service and to make the DVDs. Folks, this is not going to be church as normal. Normal seems to be an ever-changing state recently anyways. So who knows what normal is? What this will be is our attempt to once again operate in the best way that we know to love like Jesus in public worship. Let me close with this. There are tremendous gains that have been made during the COVID quarantine. This was a tremendous opportunity for you and, and I to be the church outside of the walls. I want to reinforce to you that this does not need to end. I want to reinforce that a wise man once said, be the Jesus someone else needs to see. This was not spoken for a church who served itself, but for a church who understood its calling to serve the world. Now I challenge you, be the example of the one we know is worthy worthy of our trust and our belief. May God bless you, and I hope to see you Sunday.